Clark. Big G. Karen Helen Keller. Doug Dunbar. I'd like to thank you for joining us tonight. Be sure to view us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. And uh, if you want to be a guest on the show, bring your favorite bottle of whiskey. And uh, preferably unopened. And if it is open, it, it, because it's a rare bottle, like we said in the past, we'll discuss it. It's fine. Um, please, anybody on the co-op can join the show and be a guest. Just let us know in advance. Uh, tonight on tonight's show, we are featuring MV Roland Single Barrel Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. It is a Firewater Review pick, Grandma's Candy Bowl. I won this at the uh, the last uh, what you call it show, the uh, uh, Christmas show we had, or Christmas show, the uh, Christmas event we had for the Cleveland Bourbon Co-op. The Rockefeller. And the Rockefeller. Event. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so we're going to try that tonight. And so let's switch it over to what do you got on smokes and some other information, Greg? So uh, I was at an event today at the uh, Royal Havana Cigars, and uh, I am smoking a new Trinidad, which was first released to us at Royal Havana Cigars, and it's a uh, Ecuadorian with a Habana wrapper. Uh, very good smoke. Uh, right now, you can only get them at Royal Havana Cigars, and uh, we are doing a three-day event. So today was our launch. Uh, tomorrow there will be a uh, roller there. They're going to be rolling cigars from opening and closing. So any of you cigar smokers that are in the area, go get on out there and check it out. Um, they have some neat uh, things for purchases. If you buy so many, you get a hat or you can get a, uh, a, a cell phone speaker box, if you will. You, you got to check it out. The colors are cool. And, uh, and then Sunday uh, they're doing a golf outing, which. Uh, if you haven't signed up already, uh, it'll be a little too late. And then uh, I'm cooking. I'm cooking out there. So, uh, you know, it'll be a great event uh, tomorrow. I was there today. Can't make it tomorrow uh, because I'm the guy cooking. So I have to go shopping tomorrow and get everything fresh. So uh, we'll have a good meal on Sunday. Uh, I want to say, uh, Big Sexy, welcome home, brother. Thanks. I know you've been a busy guy. Nice to yeah. see you, man. Yeah. Jet Setter. Jet Setter. Yeah, well, last weekend I had the, the wedding. But, uh, yeah. So it's good to be back, uh, at least for a couple weeks in a row. So. The Whiskey Wizard kids, he's got a little Four show tonight, so we're going to have a good time. I want to say uh, thank you to our sponsors, the Cleveland Bourbon Co-op. Appreciate you cats. Love you guys. Uh, we have a lot of response from you. I appreciate that. Uh, Royal Havana, of course. Royal Havana Cigars. Give us all of our cigars and ashtrays and everything. Uh, I want to say a uh, good shout out to uh, the Village Martini and Clifton Martini. Um, Jeff Rumblick, good guy. Um, go check them out, man. Down in Chagrin Falls and out in Cleveland, good good place to go. The Wine Reserve in Chagrin Falls and or Bainbridge and or Aurora. Uh, you know, we get a lot of stuff from them. I appreciate those guys and all their efforts that they do. And uh, <clears throat> the uh, Premier Automotive. Premier Automotive. Joe Clark. Not sure if there's an increase or a discount today. We'll get back to that later. <laughs> Probably an increase, just Probably FYI. An increase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. So I, you know, so you said that uh, we're doing the uh, grandma's uh, candy bowl. Grandma's candy bowl. MB right. Roland. All right, kids, don't put your fingers in there too too fast because. Uh, I don't want to see any sticky fingers, if you know what I'm saying. So, but. I just like on the camera here, you can see the um, glasses are sweating right now, probably because the AC in the house and going from outside. Oh, yeah, it's a cooler down out. here, man. Yeah. It's a cooler down here, for sure. It's crazy. They're I, got, I got a turtle right now, so. <laughs> <laughs> Baby turtle. Oh, damn. damn. Don't matter. Still got a long neck. <laughs> <laughs> it comes out of its shell. That's right. <laughs> Watch out. This should have hurt you. <laughs> So, Doug, what you got going on over there? Oh, just uh, getting settled back in the routine. Oh, okay. All right. Just uh, Enjoy nothing it. else over there in your corner? Nothing else? Nothing. Oh, oh. <laughs> what am I smoking? What are you smoking there? <laughs> Sexy. I'm having my first cigar tonight. So. All right. Uh, Rio, like Carrillo Dusk. Ah. Enjoying it very much. Very good cigar. I've yeah. had uh, several of those brand, of that brand. It's a uh, great cigar. One of my old favorites, actually. So I'm still a CAO guy, but you know, yeah. I like to sample a lot of different things. So it's uh, it's good, man. So uh, so what do you got, Joe? What are we talking about? Today? Well, um, I'm super excited to do this whiskey, and um, it's probably, in my opinion, and I'm sure a lot of other people's opinions, is that this pick of MB Roland, I think, is one of the best whiskey picks that I've ever had. It's one of the best bourbons that I've had. Um, it's 
it's so good. Uh, I don't want to get too much into explaining things about it, but um, it's a good comp. It, it's a good comp. This is the only offering I've ever had from MB Rolling. It's, it's you know starting out on the high note. So they have rise out now. They're coming out with barrel proof rise and all that stuff. They're doing a lot of picks of rise, and I think the Firewater Review they also did a rye yeah. uh, single barrel pick also. And um, I'm interested in trying some of that. And I'm also interested in picking up, I'm sure I will soon, get some of their regular, you know, MB Rolling single barrel berms just to try the difference. I'm sure they're, if this is that good, even their basic offering has got to be pretty damn good. I agree. You know what I mean? Sure. But uh, it's, they're not, I know they don't put out a lot of drinks. I know there's, it's not widely available like most other things. So we'll see. But I see other guys in the co-op pick it up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So. We just got a shout out uh, from my brother Stephen in Houston, Texas, mm -hmm. over there, and, and uh, is that Sugarland, if I remember correctly? Katie. And uh, Sugarland. Sugarland, Sugar Land. Sugar Land, Texas. That's cigar, cigar tonight. Uh, my brother and uh, and John Donnelly. John Donnelly, where where, John where have you been, man? You still in the dudes? I was just curious. I'm just seeing how you're doing. So I'll uh, you know, if you guys want to give me a text every once in a while, that's fine. And uh, hope you're enjoying the show. So we'll see you shortly. All right, guys, let's, uh, what do you think? Pass it out, let it sit and breathe? Mm -hmm. Who wants to do the passing? You do it. Yeah, let's go down this way. You said we'll you were going to be a little chintzy on the pores I, here, Joe. I, I, little little extra. I was going to be stingy on the pores because, you know, you I can't get any more of this stuff. But um, it's, I got decent pores out of this. There's still some left. Yeah, you, you were uh, pretty mm. generous. Thank, Thank you. Me. Thank you very much. Yes. Take a little water. So yeah. let's get into the history of uh, some MB Roland. Right. Great little history. So there's not much history because it was founded just uh, recently, 2009. So there's not a lot of history. It's located in Pembroke, Kentucky, which is a little bit outside of the norm. It's uh, of Louisville and the right and the other uh, like Bourbon Trail distilleries. It's southern Kentucky and it's about 62 miles north of Nashville. So Nashville is one of those destination places I've wanted to go. So I would love to hit that hit this one. Okay. Um, we'll be down there. Kind of excited about it. Anyway, um, it was once the site of an Amish dairy farm. And like I said, it was founded in 2009 by Paul and Mary Beth Tomaszewski. And when it was opened, Paul was the only distiller and now they employ 14 people. So very, very small Correct. distillery. Sure. <clears throat> and as Joe mentioned, it is very difficult to get their bourbons. It's available at the distillery and in limited amounts within their dis distributors. So because it's so limited, I did pull off some information about their tours and their tastings because they do those. Um, if you're able to get down there to Southern Kentucky, um, they are open Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Friday and Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., Sunday, 1 p.m. to 6 p.m., they do tours every hour on the hour with their last one, I believe, at 5 o'clock. And then in the winter months, they, they shut down at 4 o'clock. The tours are relatively cheap. Just for the regular tour, it's $5 per person. You have to be over 21. You get a complimentary shot glass, That's what I'm which is about. worth the price of admission right there for yeah, 5 bucks, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, you can actually wow. do an upgrade for $7 more and get the um, MB Roland Official Kentucky Bourbon Tasting Glass. So a whole seven dollars. Wow. A whole seven dollars. Wow. I think that's a Glenn. You only got glass. seven dollars. Make sure you give them to get one. Hold on. Okay, quit playing. Right? I buy nobody nothing. <laughs> right. So it's still twelve dollars for a Glenn Perry glass. Right. Yeah. Plus right. the tour. Yeah. Right. right. You can't beat that. No, that's cool. Maybe we should go through twice so we can, or three times so we have a set of six. <laughs> right. You just pull your back hair over through. so no one can recognize you. Anyway, um, if you want uh, a more in-depth tour of the distillery, you can go on what they call the distiller's tour, and that's $30 per person. Oh, yes, please. What do you get with that? Uh, same pretty much thing. They just go into more in-depth information about the distilling process, the different bourbons, the whole story behind mm. the making of their bourbon, and you get the Kentucky bourbon tasting glass. Um, cool. With this one, you can't just swing in, though. You do have to make an appointment ahead of time if you want to go. They do require that you have at least four adults over 21. Um, when I looked on their website just today, they don't have any of these available until the end of November and December. So well, we um, won't be making that. Yeah. So if you're interested, that would, that's a, a good place to go check out. And um, 
like Joe said, they are very limited, so it sounds like it's worth the trip. It's not too far, Southern Kentucky from here. But in addition to the uh, the pick that Joe has here, the Firewater Grandma's Candy Bowl. Hey, Doug, they, sorry, real quick. Sure. I'll spin it around to the back label so they can see that too. It's kind of cool. Right there. There you go. Oh, how cute. Um, oh, that's cute. <laughs> Get off my candy. <laughs> Get out of my bowl, boys. <laughs> Get your fingers out of there. <laughs> Don't smell like candy. Go ahead. I picked, I picked a couple. Uh, I picked some information. Hope on y'all like lemon. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. Go ahead. I, don't even know. I, I just don't even ask questions anymore. I smell like off. fish, make it a dish. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm, He's I'm always like, you know, we got to quit talking over each other. <laughs> <laughs> Just wrote that shit in here all night. <laughs> Are you done now? I'm done. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You sure? Okay. Smell like so, cologne. Leave it alone. Go I ahead. <laughs> I knew that was coming. So I pulled off some information on a couple of their other whiskeys that they have down there. They really do have a wide range and a wide variety of different uh, bourbons and whiskeys down there. They have the MB Roland Kentucky State Bourbon Whiskey. And it varies between 105 and 115 proof. And um, each batch is a blend of five to 10 different barrels. And like this bottle, it's hand labeled and numbered. Oh, cool. And then the other one that I found was interesting is called the Kentucky Dark Fired Whiskey. It's a dark fire or smoked. That's how they do the corn in their mash bill is they smoke their corn. Oh, wow and they age it in used bourbon barrels. So it gives it a little extra oomph in the proof. It's between 110 and 120 proof. Okay. So I found it very interesting that a lot of their bourbons and their whiskeys, they've got rice, they have a wheat version, mm -hmm. got a bunch of different whiskeys. They're all higher in proof. So yeah. I know that's you know, I right in your range. I think this is 110 somewhere around there. I uh, 105.2. Oh, okay, all right. I took it off the bottle. Okay, right, so you, did you get to see the information on the picture and stuff? Yes. That's I cool. Did. I like how they wrote the other things on there that you'll mention. That is I cool. I thought it was cool. It is cool. Yeah. They also do moonshine. They, you know, Ooh. one of my favorites is apple pie. They do a Kentucky apple oh. pie. Uh, I think it's it's lower in proof. It's forty five percent proof, but it's like warm oh, apple that's pie. That's not moonshine. That's so good, <laughs> and they do different flavors of that too. So I I'd, I'd be very interested huh. in trying some of that stuff. Awesome. So Joe mentioned we it is the Firewater Grandma's Candy Bowl pick. Amen. Uh, mash bill. <laughs> and it just sets it up. Amen, for Grandma. Bad, I miss you. Bad story. <laughs> It's a mash bill of 78% white corn, 17% rye, and 5% malt. Like I mentioned, it is 105.2 proof, and Joe has bottle 96 of 179, so very, nice. very limited. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm really glad that you decided to share this with us tonight. You're leaving that bottle here, aren't you? You're, you're not as stingy <laughs> as Greg <laughs> says you are. Giggity. <laughs> so that's what I, that's what I got, and? guys. What else is on the label? I don't know. It should have been your favorite part. That is a char number four. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Label. I did see yeah. it was a char number four, yeah. alligator char. Yes. Yes. I see that. Oh, see, I didn't know that part. Okay, so char number four is alligator char. They got alligators in that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is southern. Got that gator, got them gator, we should have wore gator boots today. We should have wore some gator boots. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. So, yeah. yeah. That's what I got. So, so pardon my ignorance, but Sorry. the grandma's candy bowl, what, explain that. I don't know. In case there's anybody else watching that, that might want Something to that grandpa had to make, so I'm not sure. Oh, no. well, it's uh, all. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like, cause, oh, right. Um, it's, it's like they're a candy. You know, when you do barrel picks and stuff like that, you can nickname it and stuff and come okay. up with a picture. Like, we did uh, the uh, co op did the. Um, uh, so, if they pick up certain can you know notes in the drink, they can nickname it. Yeah. So, like with the rye pick for the Cleveland Bourbon Co op from Tom's Foolery, they picked up Whoppers. So, they had a, right. a picture Candy. of Whoppers and John Candy from uh, mm -hmm. Stripes. Oh, okay. The movie Stripes. And they, you get to make your own label and, and barrel picks and have fun with it, you know. So, it's, it's, okay. it's kind of like that. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Awesome. So, you guys want to take a Nizzo's on it? Yeah, take a little Nizzo on it. Let me, uh, I'm taking it. It's going to be sweet just by the name. Do we want to read any other reviews? Yeah, you, I mean, so we have, I know you got, you have some, uh, um, uh, 
what am I trying to say? Yeah. Review. Smelling notes. Tasting uh, notes. Tasting notes. Uh, yeah, notes on the way it's the smell of it. Okay. So uh, nose, palate, that kind of stuff. Yeah, this is, so. yeah. isn't from my normal uh, mm-hmm. official source, but this is from the Bourbon Buddy. And let's see what they say. Nose is incredible. It's like liquefied, super sweet toffee on the nose with some of that dusty funk you get from old bottles. What? Dusty funk? It oh, actually reminds me a lot bro, of but I got this. Pro National Distillers Dusky that is just amped to 100. I just get fresh cedar, hay, banana peel, vanilla custard, and buttered pancakes. The nose alone is worth the price of this bottle. They named it based on the notes of the butterscotch. This, this, this is mm. going to be... For me, it's always a butterscotch bomb right. on, the, on, the, yeah. on the palate. It really is. Grandma, you, what'd you call it? Funk? <laughs> yeah, a little bit of funk on the bottle. You go, Grandma. I hope there ain't no funk in that bottle. I'm gonna be mad. Have you had this before? I have. Oh, you shared it with Greg before? We had a long it, time ago. We had it a, first a year ago. Yeah, a Where year was ago. I? Well, we had it right after the uh, after he won the bottle. You stayed home that night. You didn't want to go. Home. Yeah, you were. Yes, yeah, something, it was winter time. Yeah. Me and Joe, we, I went and hung out, hung out over there. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I was this like, dude, we got to open this and try yeah, it. Like, I've heard some things. It was like the week after uh, after the Christmas. Yeah, party. yeah. I think it was between Christmas and New Year's we tried this. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, and we were like, holy shit, this is really good. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah. Right. I told Joe, put that away. Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah. It's like we're doing that away. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's got a really great color it, too. It it's does. Beautiful. It's a nice color. Yeah. It's a heavy. That's it's very oily. Um, man, so he, a, Eric says he gets Brock's butterscotch candy out of it. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. And they said the distillery on this pick tasted mm-hmm. cake. Yeah. Really? Yeah, a little you're, bit of, you're, you're gonna, gonna be surprised. A little bit of birthday cake. cake. I'm not oh, saying nothing. I'm just on the nose. Yeah, that's. I don't think I've ever really had that. It does, like the icing. Like yeah. when you get a heavy like icing cake. Icing. Yeah, 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 right. All right, so what do you guys I think? I think I need to warm it up yeah. just a little bit, right? Yeah. Hey, Scott, shoot me a text if uh, you've had this before. I'm curious. Yeah. All right, we're going in? Let's go. Let's do it. Oh, my goodness. Oily? <sighs> That's butterscotch. Mm-hmm. Holy crap, it's a butterscotch. a heavy, thick butterscotch. Yep. Man, it's really good. It's so good, man. This is like one of the best oh my. whiskeys I've had. It's great. I, mean, I, 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 I need like 10 more bottles. I'm, I'm <laughs> there is no... <laughs> there's none. No burn on this. No. It's, it's really And it's 105.2 proof, and there is just nothing to... You could drink this all night long and not... Have any burn to it? It's good. It's really. I, really I just good. got the cake too. Yeah. After. After I swallowed, I didn't want to say that. Yeah. Yeah, the butterscotch is. Uh, it's very, very present. It's so good. Everybody's like silent. Look at. I'm waiting for Doug. It's like pure silence, <laughs> except for me. Yeah, yeah there's a lot. You're Doug, you look like you just slept in today. You know, it looks like he just off. rolled out of bed after a. <laughs> Good roll in the sack after, there after yeah, that. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's exquisite. It, it's good. Um, like yeah, candy sugar, honey, yep. butterscotch for yep. sure. Yeah, it's it's really good. And just yeah. the, the name they picked for it fits it so well. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Love you, Grandma. Thanks. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Grandma. Thanks, Grandma. Were those Werther's candies? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Grandma's love Werther's candy. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. My grandma, she had all, always had a whole dish of those. I wonder why. Now I know. <laughs> yeah, she never let you have any either. <laughs> Steve said Doug always looks like. That. <laughs> I got uh, yeah. You know, in the middle there is a little bit. I see what they say about the dusky. Mm-hmm. It was just in the middle of. A, Kind of earthy. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I get kind of a little bit of earthy so, taste to it. Yeah. Brief instance you get some of that. Earthy. Yeah. Hmm. Man, that's a, that's a really nice whiskey. God, it's man, nice. it is like butterscotch bomb, dude. It is. It's fantastic. It's like right through the, it, it lasts the whole, it it's just stays there. Great aftertaste. It's fantastic. Yeah. For sure. It's like nothing I've ever had. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We've been on a roll. All these times I've been here, we've you can just get great whiskey after great whiskey. Yep. You said you wanted to try that Sagamore. 
Some, yeah, just yeah, throwing we'll, that out. Sometime. Yeah, we'll do that after the show. We'll try some of that. Oh, okay. What, what is it? Uh, it's oh, we'll broadcast yeah. everyone. Yeah. 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 Well, guys, um, it's very, uh, it's not usual that we're so silent after this tasting <laughs> and stuff like that, but it, it's so good. It's it really is. I just, just get pretty much a, a butterscotch bomb, and, and it's like, and I like butterscotch a lot, especially that old Brock's candy like that, like Eric was saying. And mm -hmm. it's, I like this because it's. Um, Yes, Stephen. It's it has a little earthy note to it, but it is a butterscotch bomb. It's it's very very slight hint. It's of It's so earthiness. different from yeah. yeah. It's, it's so different from anything I've ever had. That's why I'm so eager to get like a regular single barrel and just drink their not a, a pick like this, but you know their regular yeah. single barrel. I bet it's really good. And then the rye. I mean, I'd like to try everything they have. Yeah, get absolutely. something like this. You know what I mean. This is this is tasty. This almost hits me like I'm not comparing, but I'm just saying in in shocking um, in being shocked by a whiskey, it's like the same shock I got in like holy crap that of our like getting some of these the Buffalo Trace picks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The smell is right. so just pungent, and it's the flavor is such. I mean, it's just in your face, man. It really is good. So Doug, what yeah, do you think? This, um, Love and care of when they're making this. Dude, you just right? get that boutique kind of small. It's a shame they only get 171 kind of, uh, bottles. Yeah. And it's vibe off. I just want to sip it. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't want to like waste it. Yeah, I don't want to drink it. You're yeah, right. I'm, I'm, I'm drinking it sparingly. Yeah, I could drink this all night, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna save. Soon. I'm gonna save the rest yeah. of mine. Oh, Eric said he's bringing another one to camp. Oh shit. Oh. Whoa. Nice. Eric, I'm hoping That's that that doesn't make the table. Heather's drinking it right now, too. I poured her a in one of my little sample yeah. bottles. So she's drinking it right now. She's like, I really love this. I was like, yeah. The, Eric, so, I hope it doesn't make the table. Wink, wink. Yeah, right. Just saying. I have a feeling Eric's going to get kidnapped next yeah, week. Eric, we're going to kidnap your ass, just so you know. Like, where's Eric? Greg I don't know. Mom. He said he wasn't coming. <laughs> Greg be like, oh, look, Elvis. Yeah. Right. <laughs> There's no four words in a tay, Eric. So what do you guys thumb. think? I think I have two thumbs up. If I had oh, four, it would yeah. be four thumbs up. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. This is one of my toes. This is one of my favorite. Other fenders. Fantastic. <laughs> Grandma, you did a great job. I mean, yeah, good yeah. job, Grandma's candy. Yes. And I don't know if they'll ever watch this, but Firewater Review, you guys picked this, and that's amazing. I, I mean, I don't even know what to say about that one. Yeah. Can I ask, um, what is Firewater Review? Is it a store? It's is a podcast. It, it's, a podcast. it's a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Nice pick. Yeah, good job. A couple guys in two different states. I think one's in Illinois and the other one is in somewhere in New York. Okay. And they do it, the show together. Oh, cool. Out of state. Yeah, nice. They, yeah. So That's pretty, I've listened to a few other shows. It's pretty cool. I mean, of course, you know we're the best, but you know. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm biased. We're unique. That but is for this sure. is, I mean, a hell of a pick. This is unbelievable. I, it's in the category of special occasion whiskey. Amen. No That's doubt. Yeah, yeah. Mean, like once I'm done taking it out on a special occasion, a holiday, yep. Christmas Eve, whatever. That's that's what. Yeah. That's the way it comes across to me. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for sharing, Joe. This is fantastic. Oh, yeah. Very no problem. Thank you very much. I have no problem sharing with you guys. Very very nice. I like it. Okay, podcast. One guy's in Columbus, another in Atlanta. My bad. Wow, okay. I was way off. <laughs> That's okay. At least you knew they were in two different locations. Yeah, geographications was off. Yeah, so. the geographications were a little the messed up. T -t 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 or whatever it was. Yeah, right. So <laughs> I know usually Joe and I, and I'm throwing these guys for a loop that uh, and I'm going to put you on the spot there, big sexy. We usually after the tasting we jump into the to the news, but Doug had a lot of well, and you've got your whiskey wizard too. So I'm yeah. gonna I'm mm -hmm. gonna bump a bunch of things. And I don't know what your Whiskey Wizard segment is, but I am intrigued by all of the videos that you posted in your travels. Oh, so, yeah, 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 that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I, uh, yeah, it's all... Dude, you guys Blue Lagoon, know. man. I, I want to go there. That's fantastic. Uh, that's a... Yeah, you got to go there. I mean, it's perfect. Uh, you Kind of between the airport and Reykjavik, so you, you get off... We, we got a rental car, we went straight there kind of beat the crowds, got there shortly after they opened. And, um, it was a Friday, so it wasn't the weekend. And uh, it's just exquisite. They have this huge 
uh, lagoon. It's right in the midst of the lava rock, and there's literally uh, out gassing steam coming out nice. in the you know in the background around where you are. And they take um, a mixture of fresh water and seawater, and they pump it down into this. Um, basically, there's hot magma below the area. And they just uh, and, then, uh, and then they pump it back up and into this uh, pond. And, um, that water color that's exactly that's that's real, and that's just the calcium sulfate and everything that's in it. So it's really really good for your skin. But so is it like a hot spring or? Yeah, if you, exactly. So like the you gas and all that doesn't yeah. bother anybody. I'm surprised to hear that. Thank no, you. it's mostly steam that's coming out. You can Thank smell you. a little sulfur and stuff like that. But it's, um, you know, they, they have a walk-up, you're in the water, two walk-up bars. So unfortunately, as I said in the pocket in my cast, there's no, uh, there's no whiskey there, but uh, they have a really nice uh, ice-cold lager that they serve there. Well, nice. Right. So, but, uh, and moving on to Scotland, uh, that is a place where they have lots of whiskey, and I, I got to sample an awful lot of different single malts in my time there. Nice. And that uh, cold freeze you were in, can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, that was in Reykjavik too. It was this, um, a room uh, sponsored by um, Brinovan, which is the kind of the local distilled product there. They make a vodka that the, the actual normal product is made from caraway. So it has this very really? caraway um, flavor, seed flavor. It's really kind of that's, different. Yeah, I'd say that's um, kind of caraway is pretty strong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm. I don't know if that's all that's in it, but that's one of the, the flavor ingredients of it. So, mm. but in that uh, they have this room that they sponsor, they put together. It's you know they have them in some other places. We were in one in uh, Stockholm, mm. and there's one in Vegas, but that's similar. But this one was pretty outstanding. Nice. Just the, with the sculptures and, you know, all the artwork they had in there and the lighting and everything made out of solid ice, including the glass you're drinking out of. And no kidding. That is so, so cool. That's wow. really cool. Yeah, they yeah. give you, of course, a big park in the winter, so. Oh, that's cool. Oh, so you're in, you're in, are you into, the, it's a whole ice thing? Yeah, it's a whole ice yeah. bar. Yeah, yeah, whole yeah, ice yeah. bar. Bar, okay. everything is made out of ice. That's it's, awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a nice, nice experience. And, um, yeah. Scotland and the scenery, you know, I think Edinburgh, uh, to me, uh, is the cool, one of the coolest places I've ever been. You know, it looks, everything looks like it's right out of a Harry Potter movie. No <laughs> kidding. Um, very quaint, you know. Um, really, a really challenging drive when you're getting adjusted to the left-hand side of the road. But, yeah, right. But, okay, don't uh, drink and drive in Scotland. Get out of my way! You're all going the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny though. I, I probably drove for you know close to five days there, and then by the end it felt weird when I got Came to back. Italy and then switched back to the right hand side. Oh, road. okay. This so, Italians know how to drive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of uh, Ferraris in Italy. Yeah, forget about it. Yeah, you you know it's yeah you you gotta watch when you if you get in the left lane to pass somebody because there might be nobody in the rearview mirror when you go to pass and then. Somebody's coming up on you at about 130 miles an hour. Nice. But sounds like my kind of place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of fun. And that the Lake District in Italy is beautiful. Which so, lake? Come on. Uh, we were first at um, Maggiore, and then that's where the wedding was, and then they all went to a villa, which is on another lake, which was I didn't realize it, but it's like two hours away. Wow. Wow. Lake Garda. So. Mm more to the east and so wow. we were there for a couple of days at this villa it was up on the mountain a little bit but it was beautiful yeah yeah it really was nice and, uh, then a little trip up through the alps into switzerland and austria and back around to geneva and back down to milan and how long was it three weeks we were gone about Two? 17 days so okay okay on. i thought it was covered a lot of ground right. yeah. yeah it was well, we, we did a lot but you know yeah but I did uh, get to sample a lot of good whiskey on the trip. So, and I, I was able to acquire some. I see that, some scotches? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Inchgower, mm -hmm. which hey, Joe, got some extremely Thanks, rare stuff. <laughs> yeah. And um, 
Yeah, we'll be we'll be tasting some of that at some point. Inchgower, you know, they most of like ninety eight percent of that goes into Johnny Walker. There's very little oh. ever available commercially, and I managed to get a bottle of that, but and it's outstanding. I, I got to taste make an appointment for that, Greg. <laughs> we <We're> definitely. <laughs> All right. Right. It's up right up your guys' alley because it's <laughs> it's you know it's it's in that flavor profile that you guys like. It's um, it's very complex but light and, and right. you know, space I'd like. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. Um, but I had some of the great Scottish whiskey experience, which was right outside the castle in Edinburgh. And so I said, oh, if I Did can you have find some of this. Huh? Did you have any grappa? In Italy, yes. After the, oh, okay. At the wedding, they served it after the meal. Steve Williams was asking. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I always find that a little bit rough, but. But it's it somehow just goes so after, like a so meal, after a meal. After meal. Before you drank it, did you do ziggy zaggy ziggy zaggy? Yeah, hoy hoy hoy. <laughs> what? That's what no, no, right here. Yeah. Right. Uh, I got my. I, I found. I went into. Um, we were at, at Talisker, and I saw on the shelf that my favorite whiskey and my Scott, favorite Scotch whiskey in the world, which was the, is the Colt Eola 18. Um, I've been trying for years to find it in there. They had a whole bunch of bottles sitting there. So I picked up two. Is it smoky? Did you try it? Huh? Is it pretty smoky? Um, is it an Isla? It's, it's an Isla, right? Okay. It's an Okay. All right. Um, I don't know if you'd like it, but it's my favorite. And close second is the Highland Park 18, which I also have. So. Yeah. Nice. So maybe, wow. you know, during Scotch Whiskey Month, all that stuff. Is... I can check my itinerary and yeah, fit yeah, in some can. tastings. Um, <laughs> and I'll this drive. Is, <laughs> I'll drive. There's also a very uh, limited uh, a release that uh, Callisburg has called Lizzie's Dram after um, one of the longtime distillers there. And um, they had that for sale too, so I picked up some of that. So, uh, you know, I was throwing out clothes and whatever I had to do to make room <laughs> in my limited luggage space. I don't, I don't need, need, need these panties. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Priorities, right? Panties. Priorities. Put so. back these. They're not mine. I'll keep these. I can use them yeah. twice. Yeah. I was jett <laughs> jettisoning stuff just to make room for the least <laughs> oh After a couple of drinks, who needs underwear? Who needs underwear? Who needs underwear? I was gonna use it like a shower. I can rewash it. I can rewash it in the hotel sink. So yeah. Sometimes I put thought on really backwards just that. to make myself feel better. <laughs> we were, Damn, I'm we were washing bed. stuff in the, in the bathroom sink and hanging it out. So. I bet you were. <laughs> so, that, uh, yeah. that lake or lagoon in yeah. Iceland will never be oh, the yeah. same. Those over there ringing. Those over there, there the lagoon teabagging. Yeah, woo! Cleaning this shit up, man. <laughs> Welcome to Scotland. Go there, bud. Um, uh, just interlock in Switzerland. Uh, if anybody, you, any, that's that's a bucket list place too. Right? Sounds like me. You got it in the yeah. bucket already. What are, what are you playing for? Um, and there was some good places to, to sample some some good single. Water. I'm sure. That sounds, sounds like great, man. Amazing. That's a that's a bucket yeah. list for sure. I'm gonna hide in your yeah, luggage next time you go somewhere. Yeah, be like, um, come up and be like, what's up, Doug? Yeah. <laughs> that means one of them shipping crates. Your clothes is gone. <laughs> one of the things I'll Whatever. say, all of those things I'll all say those. about Just put some air holes in there. They do tunnels, man. I mean, um, I went through a tunnel <laughs> that was you know, through the Alps coming from uh, Italy to Switzerland that, or to Austria that was about 13 kilometers long. No shit. And that, you know, that was probably the longest, but there were several that were 10 You walked the whole thing? They drove. They're dro oh, driving they your drove. car. Oh. And, it's just, um, and then after we went to Chamonix on the way back in, in the French Alps, you know, Mount, Mount Blanc is the tallest mountain in the Alps. It's like 15,000 feet. Um, and like, I'm thinking, well, we're going to get from here. How are we going to get? I, you know, I'm looking in the map and well, I realize that my wife's, no, we just go through the tunnel. And I'm thinking, what, what? tunnel? <laughs> There's a tunnel that literally goes through the tallest mountain. As I tell you, they do tunnels that are like camp police. So you literally drive under the highest mountain in Europe to get through it. So Sounds familiar. Oh, well, your butt plug right there. Anyway, so <laughs> lots of fun. Um, picked up some some uh, stuff along the way that hopefully will come come useful in supporting uh, 
uh, Scotch Whiskey Month in August. We That'll be a good time. It. That would That'll be, be a lot of fun. So, so if you well, haven't already, go check out the Facebook uh, Whiskey Roundtable site and see some of those travels that yeah, it's under the post section right now. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah, I post, I repost them on the main feed too. Oh, so yeah. So, we, so we do uh, Whiskey Month. I think uh, the four of us should get together and uh, pick some stuff off the bar. Um, we're we're going to do. I got to I got to talk with Dave um, because. He was talking about um, for people that buy tickets to sample what we're sampling. So we're going to have to come up with something that we have or can get a lot of, which you know, you know, they're willing to uh, pay for all that, which is fine. But I don't want to. I don't want to. Maybe uh, after show, so to say, at the lounge, maybe we can try some of the the rarity stuff, so to say. But yeah. uh, so you know, we're, we'll figure all that out. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, great good, idea. Cool. Yeah. Good yeah. show, Doug. Good show. Good show. So, you know, we were originally planning, I think, July, but I, I think it's appropriately planned for whiskey, for uh, Scotch Month. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to. It's, yeah, we're running out of time. Yeah, yeah it's just, time. everybody's got a lot of crap going on. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> yeah. It's typical summer stuff. It's, oh, uh, I don't know. I think it's been untypical summer stuff I'll tell you what, year. man. It's been well, a crazy. Well, every, dude, everybody, knows. everybody I know says the same thing, man. Yeah. I can't believe how it's how many weekends on the way? Except for Doug. Yeah. That's all right. You know, it is what it is. That's okay. Yeah. That's cool, Doug. You don't have, do you don't you have to come here. You can go on and go on to other countries, yeah. party, yeah, drink a bunch of whiskey. Don't invite yeah, us. Okay. Leave us here. Okay. We can get That's a right. back seat right here. Well, uh, I'm going to start prepping the shovels and We're the across the seat. Yeah. Midget hookers and booze. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. well, Joe doesn't like midget Well, I'll try to do some of those remote posts while I'm gone. Well, that was good. That was fantastic. Yeah. I appreciate it. Good. Sure. See, I'm glad I asked about that. See? That was great. Amen. Amen. All right, Wizard, what you All right, got? Come on, Wizard, what you got? Whiskey. Okay. Whiskey. Pay attention, kids. It's about to get real. Yeah. Well, what if we talked about last time was maybe and we went through the whole manufacturing or, I mean, making process as far as um, whiskeys. And um, so we'll, I want to talk a little bit. Maybe venture into the history of whiskey. So right. we'll call right. this the history of whiskey part one. Um, you know, there's evidence of humans uh, consuming fermented beverages all the way back to the Neolithic period. Hmm. So distillation, by comparison, is a lot more relatively new development. My wife calls me a Neanderthal all the time. Neolithic. Well, if you see the women back reasons. in the day, I mean, I can see why they came up with whiskey. But anyway, yeah. go ahead. It's a big forehead. So prehistory, people have been. Uh, Consuming fermented beverages, but distillation is relatively new. Um, and the history of distillation is intertwined with uh, mystic arts and alchemy. And we've talked about kind of in our opening uh, to the Whiskey Wizard segment. Mm -hmm. uh, early works from the Middle Ages contain descriptions of the art of distilling. Even Isaac Newton himself, who, who dabbled in alchemy and he was also known to sample the results of a local distillation artist in his town. Nice. That's how we found gravity. He had a couple yeah. too many and fell it. down. He's like, wow, hey, that's gravity. That's gravity. Um, <laughs> something makes me just want to stay on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the records, uh, King Henry II recorded the, the first distilled product um, in his description of something they served to bring a fighting spirit to his men prior to their victory in, in a major battle against the Irish in 1170. It's not clear if the product was whiskey. Um, and the first actual recorded um, reference to whiskey was from Scotland in 1494. And then in 1510, there's records from the Lindoris Abbey that also describes distilling a product resulting from fermented grains. So um, by definition, that's whiskey. Um, in medieval Europe, they eventually graduated from brandy wines and sweet liqueurs to a, a grain distillate, according to the records of the time. So, it's accepted by most historians that whiskey making arrived in Europe from first uh, from Ireland and then to uh, to Scotland. Uh, the monks, the Irish monks, got the secrets of distillation apparently from the uh, Moors in Spain. Uh, the earliest uses were likely medicinal, but then they soon discovered sure. the restorative yeah. and spirit lifting aspects that had to its growing popularity. Uh, first commercial dis distribution of whiskey is recorded in Ireland around 1536. In 1541, Queen, Queen Elizabeth I received a cask of Irish whiskey 
uh, since she was only eight years old, was probably more likely enjoyed by her. Court Damn, girl! Court Go, girl. Courtiers. You must know grandma. Courtesans or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bushmills was producing commercial product in the early 1600s and to this day, of course, their bottles are all embossed with six, uh, the year 1608. Um, and 1755 it was pretty well documented. Irish whiskey was a very big thing in England. Uh, second in popularity only to rum. Uh, oh, I'm surprised rum was hot. Later, hot. several factors began to favor Scottish whiskeys, the spread of the British Empire, um, the blight that affected the European vineyards, and the Irish War of Independence also added to the uh, change in preference to Scottish whiskeys. And then there was some co consolidation that started to happen. A lot of the smaller operators in Scotland uh, kind of went out of business. Um, in 17, 1784, the poet Robert Burns lamented the closing of his favorite distillery in his famous poem, Scottish Drink. Mm. In 1786, about four million liters uh, dude, were duty paid and sent to England. So um, it was definitely very popular. And then English distillers, English distillers of uh, I'm assuming it's gin, but uh, and, and possibly rum. Also, started to fight um, fight back against the Scottish whiskey and convince the crown to impose something called the Scotch Distillers Act, which basically was a tariff. You know, it's funny how these things come around. You know, mm -hmm. right? It goes around, comes around. Yeah, exactly right. Eventually, a more favorable excise situation result resulted in a large uh, growth for the Lowland distillers in Scotland, and so by 1817. The foundations of modern whiskey industry were really laid down in Scotland. Between 1824 and 1829, Glenlivet, Cardhue, Highland Park, Fettercairn, McAllen, Bowmore, Glenthronic, Paulton E. Lefroig, and Albor, and Milton Duff, and Springbank were all founded with production growing from about 3 million liters to, or 3 million gallons to 10 million gallons. So, wow. Huh. That's it. In the 1880s, the, it lazy with the deployment yeah. of the coffee still allowed for more widespread and mass production and a lot more varieties of whiskey. So by this time, a burgeoning new type of distilled grain spirit was quickly gaining notoriety in the new world. Bourbon was on the rise, and that's where we'll pick up things in our second part, part two of the history of whiskey. So that'll be next week. I'm Doug Dunbar, and that's it for this installment of awesome. Whiskey Wizard. Nice. Nice. I find it very interesting that rum was popular over there because I always think, you know, I don't know, maybe it's me and I just watch Captain Jack Sparrow too much, that I, was, I think it's just from the Bahamas and... Well, I always was, thought that, that rum was one of the original whiskeys. I about bringing whiskey back right. to England. So. I always thought that that's rum cool. was one of the original yeah. whiskeys. Hmm. That's the whole reason for right. Jamaica. Being British. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. We have some uh, good rum here. I want you to try it. It's a honey pecan. And, uh, this Kill Devil, man. Fantastic. Dude, it's, yeah, Fantastic. I was shocked. I thought it was going to be something weird and sweet. Oh, it's really, 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 really good. It's just hints. Really good. Yeah. Hints like a, it's nice. like a finished whiskey hints. Okay, now, yeah. every time I go to this, I get something a little bit different. I just got, like, dates. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, sitting yeah, I mean, for a while and breathing, you go back to it. It's, yeah, it's warming it's up. It's good, man. Like, as it's warming up. Uh, I love it. I love it. Very, very There's like good. a notes of uh, the dark fruit there a little bit. Yeah. Still butterscotch, man. Big oh, time. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's really, really good. Yeah, I've been nursing this uh, nice and slow. So yeah, it's, yeah uh, you too. Nice wow. Both of you. I've never oh, seen it's that. It's so before. good. Because there's so much flavor to it. You don't need to. When I really, really enjoy something, like I, I really enjoy early times bottle of bond stuff, but I, I, I drink it a little quicker than normal because it's twenty three dollars for a liter. I can, I'm like, there's plenty left. You know, I go to the store, there's fifty of them sitting there. You know, but it's not um, like this. Yeah, it's different. It's it's really good. It's yeah. it is. It's really good. Small oh, sips. I killed Delgado is a nice surprise, and their location in OBX is pretty cool. Stop it's it really down there. Yeah. It is cool. It's, yeah, it's we good. went and did the tour at their distillery. If you're ever in the Outer Banks, check them out. So we're, when we were in Outer Banks and uh, Goron from the Schnitzel House, oh um, we uh, we did the whole tour. So you know he's he, uh, he he's <laughs> he's funny, but. Uh, so we did the whole tour, and at the end of the tour, there was like, I don't know, probably 50 people. 
Yeah. Okay, and uh, we did the whole tour. It's a beautiful building, and uh, they you, you go there at the end of the tour and you get your sample, and they give you a piece of chocolate and all this stuff. And these guys are explaining. These two guys are explaining. Uh, you know the, the distilling process and all the stuff and how they got to this point and Just when we were about ready to sample uh, The rum my friend Goron Says comes in and he basically says wait a minute wait a minute wait wait one minute I don't, I'm not sure how you do here, but in my country you do like this one, two, three, zigga zaka, zigga zaka, hoy, hoy, hoy. And the, and the crowd starts chiming in on the zigga zaki, zigga zaki, hoy, hoy, hoy. And everybody shoots ah. the rum. And these two guys, are, they, they look at each other like, what the hell just happened? He's dead on Clevelanders. <laughs> and it, like, it, it ruined their whole presentation, but everybody was all like, yeah, you know, everybody's clapping. Loosen <laughs> things up. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. Was I, wanted to, I wanted to crawl out the door. I oh, not me. That was great. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, really? That was great. Yeah. Too, too funny. It was so funny. It was good times. Hmm? Hey. Uh, oh, yeah. I just want to say, uh, uh, before we close our show, I just want to say, uh, hey, Donnelly, if you're uh, watching the show still, um, I know that uh, you guys are at Cigar Cigar. Mm -hmm. I know you got a part-time job there, so I'm hoping that all the toilets are clean oh, for when I come down to Texas, okay? So, uh, oh, boy. And, and, and wash the windows, too. And if you're lucky, when you come to Ohio, I'll let you wash my car. Okay. So, so what else? So, <laughs> Joe, did you say something about news? I did. I did. So we have some exciting news for me again. I don't know how exciting it really is, but uh, whiskey distiller. All right, everybody go to sleep. So whiskey distiller Diego, Diego, if I'm saying that correctly. Diego. Uh, they're doing a Walking Dead whiskey for your Walking Dead fans. It's $31.99 to $36.99. Uh, they say it seems it's supposed to be pretty good, so I don't know. Uh, they are one of the largest distributors out there, so we'll see. Um, uh, very good whiskeys and our uh, that was people were talking about on the uh, interwebs here that I was searching around. They say very good whiskeys that nobody's ever heard of. One is called Slurs Slurs S L Y R S three year. It's a Bavarian single malt. It's the first whiskey from Germany. Really? Yes. So whiskey as in like a Scotch type right. bourbon type. Right. Yeah. Very and it's very Scotch like. <laughs> And it is, uh, it, it's the first from Germany. It's Bavarian single malt sliders. It's a three year. Uh, Cavalon Concert Master Port Finished. One of my it favorites. It is $114.99 and it is 40%. Uh, Cavalon, uh, Karen has a Cavalon bottle here. She looks good. It's Cavalon. really, she it's really good, dude. For sure. Yeah, it's good. Another one called Bain's Cape Mountain Whiskey. From South Africa, it is a single grain. There's not a lot of information on it yet because it isn't released yet. Uh, I think sometime this month or next month. So what's the grain? It, they didn't even didn't say. say. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll find out as time goes on. And another one called Box B O X Box Single Malt Whiskey. <laughs> box, you got it from the box. Box Single Malt Whiskey, Sweden, four plus years plus eight months in American oak cast. Oh, okay. And then another one called Pendurn Portwood from the British Isles. It is a new whiskey from the British Isles. It is going to be released sometime later this year. And then another one is from the Caribbean, who is known for usually rum. Uh, it is called Captain Don's Whiskey, coming from the Caribbean. I think that's going to be in America, actually. Oh, no shit. Sure. Yeah. All right. So that's it. And that's just, I just felt like putting out there some interesting whiskeys. I know none of these will probably, except for Cavlon, I think might be coming to Ohio. Um, the uh, other whiskeys, probably look for it online and check it out. I'd be interested. I'm going to save this list here and see if Absolutely, uh, yeah. we can try some of this stuff. But I want to keep an eye out for that Catalan Master Port Con Absolutely. Concert Master Port Finish. Port if finish you guys haven't tried the Catalan, it's really good. It's really, really good. Yeah, we'll do that one night on the show. Yeah, yeah, that's right. we got to do that. That's yeah, a really good whiskey. Awesome. Yeah, you could, you could kind of actually stick that in for... I guess Scotch months. That's I, I know it's Taiwan, but I guess we could do a Taiwan month. But I mean, it's a Scotch. Taiwan month. Yeah. Are there four yeah. different ones that we could do in one? Sure, month? sure. Is there? Yep. It's a malt whiskey. Yep. It is a malt whiskey. I mean, if you didn't know, you'd think you were drinking some kind of Highland or okay. Space. Okay. So if you have the Cavalon, we'll call it malt whiskey month. Then. All right. All right. Well, 
Right. We're called Scotch Munster. <laughs> or we Do could, whichever, whatever we figure out. Yeah, yeah whatever. All right. All right. And I think that's, that's it, guys. All right. All right. All right. I just want to say, uh, uh, Scott Roblath, give me a shout out. Uh, Don Link, thanks for watching. Uh, Steve, my brother, I love you, man. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. And uh, Eric. Eric Black, always a pleasure with you, yes. for sure. So we'll see you next week. Uh, don't bring that bottle, because you might come up MIA. So uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you very much. Yeah, give us uh, about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, and we'll be back on. Q&A, uh, Q&A. Live Q&A. If you guys want to call in on the show, live for the Q&A, um, call in, message I'm us. Angry. We'll be right back on. We're going to end this live feed and start a new one for you guys. And uh, we'll see you in a little bit. We are your hosts. I'm Joe Clark. Big G. Karen Helen Keller. Doug Dunbar. See you soon. Drink responsibly. Have a great Be week. Be safe, everyone. Bye-bye. All right, guys.